Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us for this weekly media briefing. I don't have any announcements, so I'll open the floor for questions. But why don't I start with you? Sir Meghna Dev from DD News. Uh, uh, do we know of any ca Indian, uh, Indian nationals, any casualties that have happened in Israel uh, amidst the conflict? Okay. Yes, please. There have been two uh, UN security resolutions calling for a humanitarian ceasefire and a humanitarian pause in Gaza. What's India's position on that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you take first and then I'll come to you. Sir, Ayush Shigwal from ANI. Uh, sir, I would like to have your comment on a recent media interview of the president-elect of Maldives. Before I go to that, I think there are some more questions still on Israel-Palestine. Why don't you take that? I'll come back sure. to you. Yeah, Israel-Palestine. <laughs> yeah, please. Microphone, please. No? Hello. Yeah. Pia Krishnakuti with the print. Uh, just wanted the MEA's reaction to uh, the Gaza hospital bombing, for which uh, there's still no, there's no ascertained uh, actor who has taken responsibility for it or there's not enough information to say who is responsible for it. What is the ME's reaction on this? To what? To the bombing. Ah, to the bombing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, Sandeep, News 18 India. Se. Sir, my question is that Lebanon mein bhi Hezbollah is with Hezbollah. The area that is bad with the situation there, so is there any advice for Indians or those who live there? Is there any advice for them? Okay. Anybody else on this? Yeah, no other questions? Good. Let me try to take this uh, set of questions. Um, look, let me let me make uh, broadly, uh, first on Operation Ajaya, uh, we've been talking about. Um, I think the query was, uh, Vijay Lakshmi ji, aapka prashna tha, kitne log aaye hain wahan se? Dekhi, Operation Ajaya chol chal raha hai, uh, uske tehet kari 1200 log abhi wapis aaye hain, 5 flight opar. Um, isme kari uh, 18 in me se Nepali nagrik bhi shamil hai. Um, हम सिचुएशन का जायजा ले रहे हैं और आवश्यकता के आधार पर हम फ्लाइट्स और प्लान करेंगे आपने गाजा के बारे में पूछा था uh, वहां पे पहले करीब चार लोग थे अभी एग्जैक्ट नंबर हमारे पास नहीं है कोऑर्डिनेट कर रहे हैं और मैंने कहा था करीब एक करीब 12 या 13 लोग वेस्ट बैंक में थे um, गाजा में स्थिति ऐसी है निकलना थोड़ा मुश्किल है पर uh, मौका मिले तो अगर वो निकल पाए कुछ रिपोर्ट्स हैं कि एक दो निकल भी आए हैं पर हम इसको गलत खबर मैं नहीं देना चाहूंगा अभी जब तक कंफर्मेशन नहीं आए आ, पर इजराइल में अभी जो हमारा चल रहा है तेल अभी से फ्लाइट्स वो अभी जैसे मैंने कहा करीब 1200 निकले हैं पांच फ्लाइट्स में और भी फ्लाइट्स हम प्लान कर रहे हैं जैसा डिमांड रहेगा उस तरह उसके बेसिस पे ऑन द लार्जर इशू ऑफ व्हाट हैज हैपेंड ऑन द इंडियन मेगा योर क्वेरी वाज ऑन इंडियन कैजुअलिटी no, I uh, thankfully have not received any reports of any Indian casualty. Uh, as I had mentioned, one Indian national had been injured. She is uh, receiving medical care, and I understand her condition is now stable. Um, as regards uh, Sandeep ji, your question was Lebanon. Pe, um, देखिए वहां पे कोई एडवाइजरी अभी तक नहीं हमने इशू किया है जरूरत पड़ेगा हम उस तरह से एडवाइजरी इशू करेंगे हम सिचुएशन uh, पे नजर बनाए हुए हैं और जिस तरह से डेवलपमेंट्स होंगी उस तरह से अभी के लिए कोई एडवाइजरी नहीं है ऑन द अदर लार्जर इश्यूज एज यू सेड अबाउट यूएन सिक्योरिटी द ट्वीट्स एज वेल एज स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर एज वेल एज वी हैड कमेंटेड ऑन दिस लास्ट वीक वी हैव स्ट्रांगली कंडेम्ड द हॉरिफिक टेररिस्ट अटैक ऑन इजराइल the international community must stand together in combating terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, and there can be no equivocation on this. There was also issue of Palestine, and on that we have reiterated our position in favor of direct negotiations for establishing a two-state solution. We have also expressed our concern at the civilian casualties and the humanitarian situation. Uh, we would urge the strict observance of international humanitarian law 
Uh, you would have also seen, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, one of the tweets by Prime Minister, and specifically about um, the Al Ali Hospital in Gaza, where he conveyed his condolences to the families of the victims and prayers for a speedy recovery. And he said that civilian casualties in the conflict are a matter of serious and continuing concern, and those involved should be held responsible. Um, we had also talked about Yeshi, about are we providing uh, humanitarian assistance. Let me actually mention on that, and probably you also are aware, we have been supporting Palestine and Palestinian refugees through significant contribution to UN uh, Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA. A total of US dollars 29.53 million has been contributed to UNRWA between um, 2002 and 2023. The Indian annual contribution was actually increased from 1.25 million to $5 million in 2018. And we have pledged this annual contribution of $5 million for the next two years. Um, if there are any further developments, we will share that with you. We are looking at, at the situation. Um, I think I've covered all of that. Any other topic? Yes, Ayushi, you had a query. Sir, I am Shiagarwal from ANI. Uh, sir, I would like to have your comment on the recent media interview of the president-elect of Maldives, uh, Muizu, where he said that he will request the Indian government to remove its troops on day one after he takes charge. Okay. Uh, also, he said that during his meeting with the Indian High Commissioner, uh, he mentioned this as a top priority of his foreign policy. So your comment on that, and also has he taken up this matter with New Delhi diplomatically, as he stated in the interview? Okay, uh, one second, one second, one second, please. Okay, anybody on this topic? Uh, if there are multiple questions, yeah, why don't you start with you, Sandeep? Yeah, microphone to your right. I'm Sandeep Dixit from the Tribune. Uh, the Maldives president-elect uh, in an interview has said that he's uh, open to joining BRI, BRI, and they've talked highly of uh, Chinese projects that have been done. So uh, what is the state of Indian projects that are going on, and will they proceed up waste despite the change in government? Okay. Uh, yes, same question. Yes, Sudhi. Uh, sir, Shruti Rajim from uh, Bloomberg, associating with both the two other questions previous to me on Maldives. Also, anything particular and specific on the port uh, that India was building in Maldives for and, and the assistance that the Navy was giving uh, to, to the Maldivians, uh, if you could give us an understanding on that. Okay. And plus, I mean, an unrelated question. Uh, on Venezuela, sir. Uh, can I come back? Let okay. me <laughs> Anybody else on the Maldives? Yeah, okay. There's at the back. Yeah. Maldives? Yeah. Um, uh, broader, I mean, just uh, uh, Reza from Hindustan Times. Uh, basically, on BRI, again, the meeting that is being. Can I come back to you? Just let me. Look, um, you asked different parts of it. Do, do remember that the inauguration has not yet taken place and the president elect is there, so it's the same administration for now we are uh, discussing. Uh, let, me, let me make a larger point on uh, cooperation with Maldives. Look, our cooperation with Maldives um, is based on jointly addressing shared challenges and priorities. Um, the assistance and platforms that we have provided have contributed significantly in areas like people's welfare, humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and combating illegal maritime activities. Over the last five years, more than 500 uh, medical evacuations have been carried out by our personnel, saving 523 Maldivian lives. Of these, 131 evacuations were carried out this year, another 140 last year, and a further 109 in 2021. Uh, similarly, during the last five years, more than 450 multifaceted missions have been carried out to safeguard the maritime security of Maldives. Of these, 122 missions were carried out this year, um, while um, last year, while another 152 and 124 missions were undertaken in 2021 and 2020, respectively. India has also been the first responder for Maldives in any disaster scenario, including most recently during COVID. Uh, we look forward to constructively engaging with the incoming administration and discussing ways to enhance our relationship further. Um, I was, uh, there was a specific query on uh, you know, whether this issues that President-elect mentioned has been taken up. Look, he's President-elect, so uh, as of now, of course, our High Commissioner has met him, and I mentioned that we had a conversation, uh, and we look forward to engaging with the incoming administration on all these issues. And uh, Sudhi, to your query also, we look forward to continuing with our cooperation and partnership with Maldives, 
which is multifaceted, which covers areas for benefit of the Maldivian people, particularly in humanitarian assistance or welfare or disaster relief or other issues that I mentioned. Um, as regards uh, Sandeep, your query was on BRI with Maldives. Again, um, that's a statement by President-elect. Um, you know our views on BRI, and I understand when Reza has a query, and I'll, I'll respond to that. Uh, but um, we are focused, as I said, with, with our neighbors, and our partnerships stand on their own merit. And we are focused on how we can take forward our bilateral cooperation. Um, uh, Reza, may I? Uh, now you can take the floor, something else, and I'll come back to Sudhi also. Yeah, Reza, go ahead. Reza from Hindustan Times. Uh, my question is basically on the BRI meeting that is being uh, that was uh, hosted by China, and uh, you know how uh, President Xi and uh, uh, there was a reaffirmation from President Putin about the need to coordinate on the foreign policy and you know uh, to work together on these issues. Uh, how do you look at that, given the fact that uh, President Putin and President Xi both did not attend the G20 meeting in Delhi? Okay, Sudhi. So, uh, Shudhirandhan again from Bloomberg. On Venezuela, sir, we see that the sanctions, US sanctions on Venezuela are being reduced or being diluted. Uh, will India start its economic uh, engagement with Venezuela, in particular buying oil uh, from, from, uh, the uh, from, from Venezuela? Okay. Huma, I'll come to you. Uh, Microphone. Umar Siddiqui from the Financial Express, just adding on to Sudhir Ranjan's question. So uh, if and when the sanctions are removed, will India start uh, discussing about the pending payments which are stuck in Venezuela? And what about the private company, Jindal's, uh, they have bought or they are planning to buy some field, uh, oil field there, uh, some if some to pay this. Okay. Uh, who are, yeah, please go ahead. Avinash Agarwal from the Asai Shimbun. So this is about the planned G20 virtual summit. Can you tell us if any date has been finalized so far and if yes, how many leaders are expected to enjoy? Uh, okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Raji from Malayalam. I just wanted to ask <coughs> about the update on uh, the eight Indian uh, naval officers detained in Qatar and also about uh, the news that one or two journalists who had reported on this were asked to leave the country recently. Any you idea? mean there? Yeah, who were based in Doha, they were asked to leave the country for reporting on this. Oh, okay. Anybody else? No, if not, we'll close with, yeah, Yeshi, you have something? Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is Yeshi again. I want to know whether uh, India was invited for this BRI forum, and uh, if yes, why did India decide to skip it? India, why did India decide, decide to? to skip it? Skip it, okay. Okay, no further questions, thank you. Let me take the BRI query. Um, Reza, um, Yashi, look, I am loath to link G20 participation, non-participation with, with any of these other things. Um, for the G20, we have invited everybody, as I mentioned. Uh, as, you, as you recall, uh, China was represented by their uh, premier here. Um, you know, different countries, uh, you know, have different decision-making perspectives when, when deciding on participation, and that's pretty normal. I, I think we've answered that question at length earlier. As regards the BRI, I, um, Yashi, I don't think we received an invitation this year. However, on our position on the BRI, including its lack of respect for our sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity, are well-known and consistent. I would refer you to our statements earlier, particularly the statement I think we made in May 2017, articulated, I think, the first time the BRI forum was being held, and I, I think those concerns uh, stand uh, even today. So um, that would be on the BRI. So the, as regards the issue of Venezuela, um, your query was, should we, will we start buying oil uh, if, if the sanctions are diluted? Look, as I said, our perspective on this, and this will be answered in the context of other countries where we, where we uh, manage to uh, procure oil, is guided by our energy security requirements, how we look at it. Uh, so depending on that a, a decision is taken, uh, we would, of course, uh, for the benefit of our own people, uh, like to have more sources uh, and access to energy, and in particularly oil. So that's something that I wouldn't like to speculate, but the larger 
principle that guides it is ensuring the energy security uh, of uh, India. Um, similarly, Huma, you had said about jindals. Look, that is a question you have to ask them. Um, of course, if they, as and when we are able to raise the issues of pending payments, etc., we will raise it. But again, without, I don't want to prejudge what could happen uh, without any significant movement on the ground. Uh, this is something, of course, we keep a close eye on. And as and when there are developments, we will share with you. But some of this, of course, is done by the private sector or by traders. Uh, so as I said, larger picture of being guided by our energy security requirements, I think, is the overarching framework. Um, Avinash, you had asked about G20 Virtual Summit. Yes, invitations have been extended. Um, I'm not sure if the date is yet public. Um, the countries know the date. There is a fixed date in November that we have. but. Um, Let's let's hold off for announcing it publicly. As yet, I'm sure other countries are aware of it. Uh, we look forward to participation by as many leaders as they can. It's a virtual event. But again, like I answered Reza's query, uh, the participation is dependent on the invitee. Uh, but we do hope that there is high level, uh, high degree of participation uh, at this uh, summit. Um, Rajiv, uh, you had asked about the developments in Qatar. Uh, let me see if I have an update here. Uh, my understanding is that uh, there was a last hearing, the seventh hearing, um, earlier uh, this month. Uh, we are closely following the court proceedings in what is called the court of first instance. Uh, as I said, October 3rd was the seventh hearing. Uh, we understand that a judgment is expected, in fact, later this month. Our, earlier, our ambassador and our deputy chief of mission met the eight men in prison uh, on October 1st after they were granted consular access. As you are aware, we have been in regular touch with the families too, and we are rendering all possible assistance. So as and when we have more updates, we will share that with you. As regards journalists being asked to leave, I presume you're talking about non-Qatari citizens. I, I don't have info information on that. I don't even know if they're Indian. I have noted. I have. It hasn't come to our attention. Nobody has complained to us. I will. I will note it down. Okay. Thank you very much for the. Sorry, you have some. <laughs> sorry, you can't jump in last. Please take a seat. I think there are seats. There, Kalul. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, the Go ahead. Karakoram Highway is being upgraded by, it's a joint effort by Pakistan and China. It's a 240 kilometer stretch between Raikot and Thokat, which is being upgraded. Besides that, there is a frontier tunneling institute in Pakistan that has begun work on the CPEC. We just wanted your views on both. Okay. Kalul, if you have a question, okay. If you could sit, it would be nicer. Yeah, yeah. this is about um, the burning issue of the day, um, the Palestinian-Israel conflict. I so just did a whole series of it, if you have, unless yeah, you have just, something. Just yeah. one, one yeah. more, which is that, um, has India really made its position clear on the ceasefire? Uh, more than 3,700 Palestinians have died and more than 1,300 Israelis are dead, many Indians are living there and working. So what is really India's position on this ceasefire? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, you have a clarification? Okay. Uh, Reza from Hindustan Times. Just a clarification, you mentioned about the hearings in Qatar and that a judgment is awaited this month. Does that mean that the charges have finally been laid against the uh, Indian sailors? Uh, thank you. Shrinjoy, I wouldn't like to comment on specific um, developments that you mentioned, except to say that uh, you know our position on these are territories that are in illegal occupation of Pakistan, and you know our position very clearly on violation of our sovereignty and our territorial integrity, and let me reiterate the same. I don't want to comment on exactly what is being done, but we, uh, our view on developments in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are very clear, and I just have to reiterate them today uh, on both these issues. I understand they do pass through those areas uh, of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir that are part of Indian territory. Um, Kalol, as I mentioned again, um, I, since you missed the first part, and you just let me, let me reiterate what you've been saying. Um, I think we have talked about the terror attack. We have condemned it. And we have, I think it is important the international community stand together to condemn it. On Palestine, our position, we have reiterated our position in favor of direct negotiations for establishing a two-state solution. We have also expressed, in particular at your query, our concern at the civilian casualties and the humanitarian situation 
uh, that is uh, happening day by day. And we would urge the strict observance of international humanitarian law. So that is what I would like to share with you. Uh, Reza, on, uh, look, I don't know. Yes, the charges were presented as part of the, of the, of the hearings. But again, I wouldn't like to get into the legal part of it. They have legal representation in court. We are now looking forward to the, as I said, the seventh hearing, uh, to what the court judgment is. And we hope that they are able to return back to India. Thank you for joining. Good evening.